How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? I'm Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our very special business today has uncommon enchantment because the motion is beautiful to witness and wonderful to understand. We are going to talk about simple pendulums and other oscillating things. Consider the following. If we have a rigid support, and there are none really because everyone shakes however rigid, and we hang an ideal string, by an ideal string I mean a string that has no mass, no weight, has no inertia, has no tension, is perfectly inelastic, ideal mathematically, and we hang a small bob on the end, and we displace it from this equilibrium position and let it go, it oscillates as a simple pendulum. Now, we wish to explore its motion. When you study the lesson in this business, you will find that the period, which is the time for a complete trip, comes out to be some such expression with which I will not have much to say, about which I will not have much to say. It's governed, as we see, by the square root of the length and depends upon where we time it. You know, for example, that G is one thing on the Earth and quite another thing on the Moon. G is 32 feet per second per second on the Earth, but about one-sixth of that on the Moon. As an incidental fact, matter, you would weigh, therefore, one-sixth as much on the Moon as you weigh on the Earth. Now, I wish to do another pretty experiment with several pendulums. And I suppose maybe we could say pendula. This may be the plural of pendulum. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to hang up three of them, as I have them here soon to witness. One, two, three. And how long are they going to be? This one is going to be 10 centimeters long, and this one 40 centimeters long, and this one 90 centimeters long. So the lengths are 10, 40, 90 centimeters. Notice the numbers, 10, 40, 90. I hope you get a little cue in there. There's one, there's four, there's nine, if we divide each one by 10. Now I am going to set them into oscillation. And I am going to count, say, 20 vibrations of each one. Here's the way I would do it. I would set this one into vibration, starting with zero. And here is a clock which I would start and stop and I will just run one a moment to give you the cue. I would remind you parenthetically, I am not really giving you a lecture in physics. I am merely pointing out some things that you yourself can do with your teacher and even at home. And my purpose is singularly this, to invite your interest and stir your enthusiasm and curiosity and point up at the same time the beauty and drama in these things. So I would start this zero, zero, one, two, three, four, and I would count 20 oscillations. And what would I get probably in this laboratory? I would get about 13 seconds. Now where you are, say Colorado on a high mountain, you would get a different time. And if you were in Australia, you would get a different time because little g is different from place to place on the earth. So I count 13, uh, 20 oscillations, and I get 13 seconds. Now I do it all over with this one. And I count 20 oscillations, and what would I get? I would get about 26 seconds. You thinking of something? Then I would do it with the 90 centimeter one. Zero, one. Oh, I should have stopped this thing because I'm not really clocking. Hey, what's going on here? Huh. Well, there's something wrong with the... Notice now, this is, this is the hazard we run when we depend on mechanical things. So I'm going to put the clock out of my sight. What would I do? Coming back here. Somebody says, isn't the professor having a wonderful time with things going wrong? Sure they are. When you deal with nature, you must make her requirements absolutely perfect or she will not do what you want done. So I count. I count 20 oscillations and lo and behold, 
I get 39 seconds. Look! 10, 40, 90. They are in the ratio of 1 to 4 to 9. 13, 26, 39. They are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. And now a marvelous thing is encountered. 1 is the square root of 1, 2 is the square root of 4, and 3 is the square root of 9. And that's what that so-called formula says, that the period is proportional to the square root of the length. And this other stuff comes out of some mathematical gymnastics. So we have learned a wonderful thing about pendulums by examining the motion of three of them. Now, strangely enough, when you make the exploration or develop the formula mathematically, notice, notice that it does not contain, it says nothing about how big is the pendulum bob, how massive is it, all the period depends upon is its length. And you can show this by such an adventure as I have here. Here I have some pendula, which are of identical length, let us say. Here is one made of brass. There is one of aluminum. There is one of cork. And we would find that if their lengths are identical, then their periods are identical. And that's a wonderful thing, because wouldn't you think that the heavier the bob, the, a different period would result? No, it does not. 